Greetings, happy coders, welcome to another video. And as you can see, here we are in Jetpack. This is the one and only original 1983 Jetpack, of course, not Jetpack RX. And today we're going to just talk a little bit about how I changed the graphics in Jetpack, which was one of the first things that I looked at doing before I made other extensive modifications. So let's just, before we start, and look at how we went about that. Let's just take a quick look at the game itself. And uh, within the game, we'll just look at the Jetman character. And in the video, we'll look at how we can go about changing that Jetman character and how I went about doing that. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just jump up and uh, fly up here. Normally, you'd be fairly safe up here. I'm sure most of you know that. You can get hit on the odd occasion, but usually it's OK. And uh, let's just take a look at the way that the sprite is being drawn. You can see there's quite a lot of flicker here. And uh, if we sort of fly down, if we fly down to the bottom of the screen here, just a second, if I can show off my skills a little. There we go. I don't quite know how I survived that, but I did. Um, anyway, as you can see, it doesn't really flicker so much at the bottom. It flickers a lot at the top up here. And uh, the reason for that is that you have a raster bar which is refreshing at uh, 50 hertz, I think it is, and uh, 50 megahertz, I should say. And um, it's um, if you're at the top of the screen, the code, the overlap for the code, the code is in a loop, and when it overlaps um, before the raster bar has caught up again, um, it will it will result in the the code overrunning onto the raster bar, and then you get this kind of flicker because it, it hasn't uh, the code hasn't had a chance to catch up with what's been happening on the screen. So that's a, a problem, and it's quite common in a lot of early Spectrum games. Um, some methods were found later on to help address these problems, but in 1983, especially on the 16K version at least, um, this wasn't uh, something that had been addressed very well. Although, ultimate, it has to be said, probably did more than most to create a game that looked more like uh, an arcade game with actual hardware sprites than had previously been achieved. So um, how did they do that? Well basically what they did is rather than draw the sprite uh, vertically, uh, sorry let's say from top to bottom as you normally would, they actually draw it from the bottom to the top and the reason that helps is that obviously what can happen when you're drawing this way is that the raster bar could end up overlapping with the sprite as it's drawn and then you get a lot more flicker if you see what I mean whereas if this if it's being drawn upwards then it's only going to overlap on one pixel line and that's why rather than a full flicker of the entire sprite you get these kind of little overlaps of a single line each time as it's as it's drawing it so that's the reason now that's a not a fully technical explanation but I hope in layman's terms that helps you to understand how it's actually uh, working. And we need to understand that because obviously if we want to replace the sprites, we need to look at how we can um, extract that data and then redraw it. Now fortunately, um, I've uh, managed to get a copy of the disassembly of Jetpack and um, it's uh, it's done by Michael Cook and you can see there's a link here if you're curious and would like to uh, know more about uh, the disassembly and in further detail then you're more than welcome to go over there. Michael did a fantastic job and I certainly couldn't have done uh, the work I did without uh, standing on his shoulders so to speak. Okay so um, we're not going to look too deeply at the disassembly in this video but what I will do is show you in, within the disassembly how the uh, graphics data is actually stored. Okay, so if we go into the source code, this is the original source code, and uh, you can see here, this is the graphic here for uh, Jetman flying to the right, and this is all stored at the very top of the 16K memory, and um, what you'll see then is that each sprite is actually a slightly different size, in each frame is slightly different depending on whether it needs to be drawn on two within two characters, two tiles, or three. Depends on the position of the sprite. We'll look at that a little in a little more detail later on. You, you'll see a graphical representation that will show you that. 
but the, the main thing we should look at here then is there is a, a byte here which tells it how many tiles it's going to draw across and here there's another byte which tells it how many uh, bytes it's going to draw down so obviously with the example here we're only drawing on two across two tiles and the, and there are a total of uh, 24 pixels that's in hexadecimal here and for the second sprite as you can see it's going to be shifted across so as the jetman moves across rather than occupy two columns he's going to be occupying three and as a result we need quite a lot more bytes here and in fact here we've got 48 bytes and here we've got 72 now that's not really an issue in terms of the, the speed I'm sure that the processor can handle that without too many difficulties but in terms of let's say ripping the graphics it, it does prove a little tricky because all the graphics are different sizes so if you're looking for a kind of binary save or something like that it's difficult to um, extract the sprites because they're not one all one standard size as they would be in uh, some other games for example in uh, AGD games or something like that where all the sprites are in fact the same size so in this case there are different sizes even the sort of enemy aliens and so on have different heights and various things so it's not even at all and uh, that's the reason why the game also uses a lookup table so when it draws the sprite um, I'll show you that now just a second yeah so if you take a look here you'll see that we've actually got a sprite table which tells the game the address for each of the sprites and where to find them and this is important because as, as I already explained the sprites are actually different sizes so um, when it comes to extracting the data and of course re-injecting it back into the game it's a lot simpler if we can do it at the sort of uh, code level at the assembly language level rather than extracting a binary and then editing the binary and then trying to sort of put that binary back into the um, into the game so um, let's take a look at uh, how we can go about doing that although before we actually do that there is one more thing to explain obviously as I mentioned earlier because the sprite is being drawn um, in reverse from uh, bottom to top then this this data here these bytes one two three this is all this will be the the very bottom as you can see these are all zeros and you may remember from the screen there is a sort of black a blank line just below his feet well that's what that is and then the, the jetman data comes in there so it's in reverse order so again extracting the data um, from here is also problematic because um, once we got it out it would be upside down and then we'd have to flip it back and then reverse again and that's just um, in terms of editing it that's also something of a, a pain so the uh, the best thing to do then really because we've got access to the um, to the source code is to just add a routine and so what I did is I basically added a routine within um, the code and uh, this is a debug mode it's not enabled in the release version but in my own version I can switch the code enable the debug which allows me to press a key which then displays all of the data on the screen so that I can see it um, in a what you might call human readable human editable form and then from there um, I can work on that data and then edit it and save it off and uh, save it off in, in assembly language and uh, put it back rather than uh, poke it back into the game what I'll do is I'll, I'll literally just put it back into the code here and in fact what you can see as I've switched over here you can see that there's a option here if remix so remix is basically rx jetpack rx and you can see that I've got an option here that replaces the original code which is this one with uh, the version that's that you've got in jetpack rx so I'll show you how we do that and what we'll do is we'll uh, put a new character into the game which I haven't even implemented yet and uh, should be a little bit of fun to replace the original jetpack character or even the jet the, the jetman rx character with uh, another spectrum classic graphic which, which we can then make available for people to to use in a future version okay 
So let's switch over and let's look at the debug and see what that does. And here is Jetpack RX. And with the debug, all I have to do is just press S and it will basically run a routine. And again, I'm not going to go into the full detail of the routine, but basically all it does is it looks at the data and it prints out the sprites, or at least most of the sprites here. And uh, what I've done for this particular demonstration is I've kept the original Jetman here. So this is not the RX version. I've replaced it with the original Jetman just for the purpose of this video so that you can see that we've got the Jetman here and that we can basically take this data and uh, extract it. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can extract this data now that we've got it on screen. The simplest thing that we can do is we can just save it off as a screenshot and load it in, into uh, an editor such as ZX Paintbrush and uh, that's, uh, that's a nice easy way of, uh, of getting everything that you need. So we'll now move over to ZX Paintbrush and we'll take a look at that. And here we are in ZX Paintbrush and as you can see we've got the sprites, all of the sprites that we need, the 16 frames that we need and what I've done is I've reorganized them into the order that they are on the um, within the assembly code and uh, the reason for that I will explain fairly shortly but first of all let's just zoom in and we'll take a look at the way that the graphics are drawn and shifted okay so I'll just switch off the attributes for you so that you can see and as you can see what we've got here is one two three four frames and for the actual Jetman himself there's no animation within here but we're basically moving across two frames each two pixels each time so here across two across two across two so and this is what we what we mean when we say shifting so for the first two frames here you can see that they only use two char two characters across they're only two characters across whereas these two are three characters across and this one is also three characters across so um, that's one of the reasons why the data is slightly different each time and you may also be wondering why would it be why have I got the first frame here and then I'm moving up well the answer to that very simply is of course as you will remember these are being drawn upside down and I'm basically looking at this in a way that is um, human readable easier for me to edit the reality of the data would be that I will actually save it when it comes to saving it, I'll be saving it like this because the data will come out in a reverse order. This is the actual order that the source code will expect. So this is frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4 here. So I'll be extracting these in that way and we'll look at that a little bit later. So that's basically how we do it. But obviously what I want to do is if I want to edit this then um, rather than sort of stand on my head I'll just flip the graphics over and I'll edit them this way and once I'm happy with them I'll then flip them and then I'll extract them and put them into the game so that's the reason they're in this order and the reason I've got them obviously in this in this vertical form here is that it allows me to grab these two frames followed by these frames here and in fact it would be because it's upside down it would be these two first followed by these ones here and these are these are flipped and those are for the reverse direction and uh, the same principle applies here and then for here obviously we've got him walking and again as you can see this would be the first frame and the second and third and the fourth frame it's going from bottom to top because that's how it's drawn and so the same principle would apply there as well Okay, so let's shift over now and take a look at how we can implement some new graphics and a new character into Jetpack RX. Okay, so here we are, and as you can see, we're using Dynamite Dan. And I'm going to look at putting this character of Dynamite Dan into Jetpack. So we want to get to a little point where we can 
look at the frame and as you can see it uses a very similar system of shifting one frame followed by a second by a third by a fourth okay now obviously I could go into the ROM here um, and uh, the RAM rather and uh, try to see if I could extract the graphic for dynamite down but I don't know exactly what it's how it's being drawn or anything like that so I'm going to show you a trick that you can use to very quickly grab a simple graphic like this from a game and put it into ZX Paintbrush. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set fuse to be a uh, single size. So this is currently at double size. We're going to shrink it down to its normal standard one to one size pixel to pixel. So we'll go to filter and as you can see this double size we're going to put it down to normal there and as you can see I've got the ZX paintbrush in the background okay now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the Windows snipping tool so we'll pause the game here's the snipping tool and I'm just going to take a very small snip like this just enough like that, that tiny little bit like that and then I'm just going to copy it just like that and if I now go over to ZX Paintbrush here and uh, we'll just shift across then all I have to do is go to paste windows bitmap and bring that down here and you can see that it's basically picked it up there as a, on a one to one and I press OK and there it is now the only thing that I need to do then is just invert it so invert the pixels here and invert the color attributes there and you'll see that I'm able to grab one small piece easily from the game. So all I have to do then is grab uh, those four frames one by one, paste them into here very quickly and I'll have the Dynamite Dan character. And then following that we will add a jetpack and we'll also give him an additional animation frame here. So let's take a look at the end result. And as you can see, here is the completed version. Um, I've tried to keep it uh, as true as I can to the original so that he walks in exactly the same way. We've just added the jetpack on his back there and uh, I've recreated his legs in a similar style to the, to the original graphic for him when he's actually flying the jetpack there. Okay, and if you take a look here, you'll see that I've also tried to maintain the the uh, number of characters here. So there is a limitation here because of the size. You've got two characters here and two. If we're going to do a like for like copy, that is to say, copy the the same data over to um, over the original jetpack, then obviously we're going to have to keep it the same size. And so that's why this character Dynamite Dan fits very nicely into here because he is a sort of a, quite a tall chap isn't he much like Jetman himself whereas say for example if I wanted to put something like Monty Mole or Horace in here uh, God forbid then um, um, it would be more tricky because obviously it would be a wider character so it wouldn't quite work in the same way okay so let's go back to the source and take a quick look at how we can basically edit this or rather export this um, back into the source code and then assemble it and then hopefully we'll have uh, Dynamite Dan flying around inside of Jetpack. Okay so switching back to the source code and as you can see here we've got graphics Jetman fly right and we've got these 48 bytes here so what we need to do is basically uh, get those get the equivalent of those from the design the new design that we've got. So let's now switch back again to ZX Paintbrush. Okay, so here we are. The very first thing that we must remember to do is to flip the graphic like so. And this is Jetman fly, flying to the right, so that will be this one here. He's flying to the right there. And uh, let's take a quick look and just check how many characters across we are. And just to confirm, we have just two characters across. 
and it will be three down. It's 24 bytes, which is three characters, three squares down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight that area here. And from within here, we're going to use export the file selection. And we are going to export it as assembler data and we don't actually need to give it any particular name because we're not actually going to save it so we'll just save it as 1.asm and uh, I've got this set up here in order to, to manage this so what we've got is bytes per line 8 we've got a hex prefix here we're going to do it as upper case hex output and uh, the line prefix is going to be def b and the block pixel width here is going to be 16 and the height is going to be 24 and I'm just going to export it to the clipboard like that and now I'm going to jump back to the assembler so here we are in the assembler I'm going to make a little bit of space here and I'm just going to paste the data in so you can see here that it's come out ASM data for a ZX paintbrush 16 by 24. So I can lose all of that. And basically I've got a set of numbers here which I can replace these with here. Like so. Okay. Now, as I hadn't mentioned, what I've done here is I've created a dummy file. I'm not actually directly editing the source code. So what I'm going to do is uh, repeat this process for the rest of the sprites. Now, I don't have to do them all, every single one, one by one, because you can see here, for example, that this one is a width of three, and this one is also a width of three. So it means I can export the data here, and this time I'm going three across, just like that. Just drop this down here. I can export these three together because they're all um, three characters across. Since this one actually isn't three characters, you can see it could have been done in two, but in the game it's been done in three, so that's how we'll do it. So again, we'll go back to the export option here. We'll choose assembler data again. Or we just give it any old file name, doesn't matter. Again. And this time we're going to adjust it so that it's 24 by 24. And again, we just choose export to clipboard. And I think I'm also going to just change it very slightly here. I'm going to take away the space between the byte separators, just so that it makes it a little bit more compact. And we just export it to clipboard, and we jump back to the assembler again. OK, so here we are. And this time, we've actually got one, two, three sets of data that we're going to replace here so it would be this one this one and this one each of these is 72 bytes so I'm going to create a little gap here for myself to work with and paste the data in and there you can see it's a little more compact because I've removed the commas and so we can start here and this one is going to replace the original the second image and this one is going to replace the third image so I'll take a copy of this go down to here so this is the original so we'll delete that image 2 and this is image 3 so I'll highlight that remove that and replace it with our data and then finally we'll come back up here and we've got this image here which is our fourth image here so we'll tidy this up and we've now replaced images one two three and four this is the fourth one here this is the last one so all we have to do is just paste that into there and so we've now got for jetman flying right one two three sets of data okay so let's now uh, 
see what happens. Let's just paste that into the original source code just as a test and run it and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see here, we're in the original source code and I've just pasted over this. Now, what you would want to do is because there's plenty of memory left, we can use this sprite data, we can put it into a bit of the spare memory and then rather than overwrite the original, we can just point it. We can use the uh, lookup table that we looked at earlier and we can point that at the actual um, new sprite data and that would allow us potentially to allow the player to choose different characters within the game. So um, I've already added a couple of others and I'm, I'm probably going to be doing a little addition to the game where you'll be able to unlock certain characters within certain situations. So what I've done right now though is I've just copied the data purely just to show you as a demonstration how we might um, assemble this and then run it. So I've assembled it already and uh, what we'll do now is we will uh, take a look and open the game and see what's happened. Okay, so here we are in regular Jetpack RX. It's assembled as normal. And we've got here the usual menu. We press Start Game. And as you can see here, Jetman looks quite normal, just the original regular old Jetman. And uh, if he's moving to the left when he flies, he looks absolutely fine. But when he flies now, as you can see, just like magic, it's now turned into uh, the one and only Dynamite Dan. So that's worked absolutely fine. It looks great. So the only thing we have to do then is go through the rest of the graphics and uh, edit them. And as you can see, once he's walking again, he's back to being regular Jetman as soon as he takes off there. So we just go through the rest of the graphics, edit them, and uh, that would give us the full effect of having uh, a different character in the game. So I'll just um, do that work and uh, come back with a, within a moment and uh, show you the results. So here we are back again with the first stage of that work complete. If we go into the game you'll see we now have Dynamite Dan walking around, flying and shooting and getting blown up. So, and there are a couple of things though that need to be addressed here. So one of the things immediately is to think about is the height of the gun. As you can see, it's just slightly off. That's because of the change in design. That's an easy fix though. Um, it's one small uh, bite in the code, which will change. And uh, no need to really show that. But the other thing which I overlooked in this design is uh, should be immediately apparent when he's actually uh, walking on the ground. He does look like Dynamite Dan and he walks just like Dynamite Dan, but when he shoots he appears to have a no gun at all. So <laughs> I haven't given him a gun. He doesn't have a gun in the original. So uh, I have to do a redesign on the sprite for that, but that's uh, again pretty straightforward. We just go back into the game and uh, give him a gun uh, into ZX Paintbrush, let's say. So we're back here in ZX Paintbrush and obviously what we want to do is just lift this arm up so we'll just take his arm away like that. Also put that into there like that, that seems pretty straightforward. And uh, I guess we'll just copy what we have here. So let's just put that into there like that. Something like this, that looks okay. Give him his gun, one, two. That looks reasonable and let's just see do we have enough space here there's no overlap here could cause a bit of a problem when we move it across two pixels here drawing the gun again so I think what we'll do then in that case is we'll just drop the gun back one pixel just like that see how that looks oh, it doesn't look too bad I think it's livable and uh, so now we'll just take that and we'll copy it over to the rest of the sprite. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone through the rest of the sprites here and made those adjustments, made a couple of small changes to the legs and so on. And that gives us the effect that we want. 
And uh, I think the only thing then that we need to do is uh, copy that back. I just wonder whether I'll just put an extra pixel in there, probably. No, that doesn't look right, does it? Okay, we'll leave it like that. Uh, yeah, we'll just leave it. I think it's okay. So yeah, we'll just uh, export that as assembly data, just as we've done before. And uh, so I'll do that and um, come back one more time and that should be it. Okay, so I've made the appropriate adjustments, put it into the assembly and uh, assembled it. And uh, so now we should have a fully working dynamite down. And I've also adjusted the height of the laser to suit the sprite as well. So let's take a quick look, see if that's worked. Here he is. Yeah, he's now got his gun, he's running around, that looks okay. He's flying, he's landing, he's moving like the original Dynamite Dan, and, but he's also got the jetpack mode, so that's great. I would say that one is job done. So let's pause it there. Yeah, so basically that's just a test. I've overwritten the original. Um, I'll put the original one back now in the source code, but I've got the dummy copy that I made and what I'll do is I'll keep that uh, because that basically is the data that I need in order to put this character into the game. And then I've got uh, two options really. One would be to uh, integrate this character into the game as a, as a perhaps an unlockable character or perhaps as player two. Uh, but if I don't have enough space for that, then what I might do instead is create a POC file so that uh, people can choose the character that they want to use um, within the game. So a little like a sort of DLC for Jetpack RX, if you like. That would include uh, some of the other characters that I've done. So there is a Saberman character. There's also a uh, Baggers character. And um, I think I'll probably include the original Jetpack Jetpack. Uh, Jetman in there as well since uh, some people might prefer to use him as opposed to the one that I uh, adjusted so each to their own of course all right so that's it then for uh, this video I hope that you found it insightful and useful and uh, I'll see you next time and as always happy coding thanks a lot This video would not be possible without the amazing contributions from the people whose names you can see scrolling up the screen right now. If you'd like to be one of them, you can get all my games for free, you can get some coding tips, you can even get to dictate which games I work on in the future, and you might even feature in them. So if that sounds good to you, then head over to the Patreon page, the link is just coming up now. And in the meantime, happy coding. Bye bye.